a soccer stadium in the east of Java, Indonesia. In January 2023, a memorial service was held in the space outside the stadium's main gate. This is where one of the worst disasters in the history of global soccer took place. One hundred thirty-five people died, many of them women and children. Soccer fever has taken over Indonesia, with the government boasting that 70% of the population are fans. But the fanaticism of supporters often leads to violence, with some even calling the country's national league the world's most dangerous. The tragedy took place in October 2022, shortly before the Qatar World Cup. As the game ended, supporters of the losing team stormed the pitch. Security officials fired large amounts of tear gas in an attempt to contain them. This caused a stadium-wide panic as crowds rushed to the exits. The resulting crush was fatal. A government investigation quickly determined that the main cause of the tragedy was overzealous action by security forces. But it remains unclear who bears responsibility for the events, and families of the victims are furious. I don't understand if the victims of our parents who killed their parents when they were in the tribune, I don't understand. Memperjuangkan anak saya itu adalah suatu kewajiban saya sebagai orang tua, ayah. Dan apabila saya tidak memperjuangkan, anak saya akan kecewa. Meanwhile, a new movement is motivating fans to transform local soccer culture. Amanya jangan rusak ya. Ya, om. Ya, om. These dedicated supporters are hoping to help a new, safer sporting culture take hold. A tragic incident that took the lives of many soccer fans. As the bereaved seek answers, efforts are being made to reduce the violence associated with the league. The outskirts of Malang in the east of Java. It's home to Kanjuruhan Stadium, which seats around 40,000 spectators. This is the gate to the stands where so many were killed. Photographs and mementos are displayed here as a memorial. <laughs> a network of bereaved families hold prayers at the site. They meet regularly to share their grief and anger and support those in the same position. Allah. <laughs> Wow. 
One of the group's leaders is Vincenzo Sari. He lost his oldest son, who was just 15. His son, Rivano, was the captain of his local soccer team. Physically gifted, he played defense, but was also a talented goal scorer. He received offers from many strong local teams and had a bright future ahead of him. The day of the accident, Sari stayed up until midnight waiting for his son. When he didn't return home, he headed to the stadium. He visited several nearby hospitals where victims had been taken, searching for his son. Krishna telpon saya, ya sudah ketemu. Ah, mas di mana? Dan saat itulah aku nggak bisa bilang, tapi cuma saya video. Ini mas nak. Disitulah titik yang paling berat bagi saya dan keluarga mengetahui kakaknya udah tidak ada dalam kondisi sudah enggak bernyawa. Sari's wife and Revano's mother, Priscilla. The tragedy has affected her greatly, and she's found it difficult to be social. Revano often looked after his two younger brothers. The stadium became the site of one of soccer's worst tragedies on October 1st, 2022. It was a Saturday night. Arcelino. Arema FC, a strong local team, faced their bitter rivals on home turf. It was their first home loss to their rivals in 23 years, something which only added to the crowd's frustration. But chaos didn't break out immediately after the end of the match. It's thought that these were the first supporters to enter the pitch. They evade security to approach the players, hugging them. Suchi Rahayu is a local sports reporter who was at the stadium. She has reported on hundreds of Arema matches. At first, she didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. Uh, biasa kayak apa ya mas udah kayak tradisi gitu loh kayak dat, apa habis pertandingan terus mereka nyamperin pemain gitu sih apa ya hal yang masih wajar gitu nggak ada kayak mereka marah-marah atau apa meskipun kalah gitu mereka nggak mereka cuma kayak ngasih support aja gitu jadi ini awalnya kayak gini apa santai gitu loh nggak bisa kejadian kayak itu akhirnya Suchi left the pitch to attend the team's post-game press conference as usual. A 
cameraman stayed behind, continuing to film. Muhammad Firman works for a local newspaper. He captured the deployment of the military and police. Ketika saya melihat itu semakin banyak, aduh ini kok gawat sekali sepertinya gitu. Dan juga apa ada lemparan-lemparan benda saya tak tak tahu apa itu. As the stream of supporters on the pitch overwhelmed stadium security, soldiers and the police stepped in. Scuffles broke out, and tear gas canisters were fired in an attempt to suppress the mayhem. Many fans were beaten with batons and kicked. The chaos escalated. Yang lebih saya nggak kuat sampai oke saya memutuskan untuk mundur itu karena memang wajah sudah panas, mata pedih dan juga kesulitan bernafas. Arema FC supporter Ibrahim Riki Herdianto was in the stands. He says the spectators panicked as soon as the tear gas canisters were fired. Tembakan gas air mata itu berapa kali tembakan itu diarahkan ke tribun utara, tribun selatan, tribun skor semua diarahkan. Itu jeritan anak kecil, jeritan seorang ibu-ibu, jeritan anak perempuan bilang minta tolong, tolong dan tolong. Dan situasinya itu sangat mencekamnya itu kayak perang. Suara tembakan dah 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 dah. Da. Supporters rushed for the exits, causing a stampede. Many were crushed underfoot and killed. The location which saw the most deaths was Gate 13. This area of the stands is normally used for families and women. Witnesses say that the door was locked. Suchi learned of the situation while in the press room. She was shocked to see people suffering after inhaling tear gas and injured supporters being pulled out from the crush. Itu sesak nafas kan? Kan bahaya juga kan itu. Akhirnya ya udah enggak lama gitu tiba-tiba banyak juga yang ada yang nangis, ada yang udah apa supporter itu teriak-teriak, "Hei, ini mati ada yang ngomong kayak gitu kan?" 135 people were killed, two of them police officers, making it the second deadliest incident at a soccer venue. With the World Cup just six weeks away, it was a shocking tragedy for soccer fans everywhere. Indonesian President Joko Widodo visited the site himself four days after the incident. An investigative team was tasked to uncover what caused the tragedy. One member of the team is Akmal Marhali. He began interviewing local security staff and victims. Karena ini sejatinya bukan efek dari fanatisme sempit atau fanatisme buta supporter tidak mungkin ada yang meninggal dunia tapi kalau tidak ada gas air mata yang ditembakkan dengan jumlah total kalau tidak salah 88 gas air mata yang ditembakkan use before Desember 2019 polisi menyampaikan bahwa expire daya 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 apa ya ukuran tapi peneliti dari luar negeri beda. beda itu kan yang harus kemudian dicocokkan FIFA guidelines forbid the possession and use of firearms and tear gas in soccer stadiums. But this rule hasn't been followed in Indonesia for many years. Tidak melakukan sosialisasi dan juga tidak melakukan edukasi kepada polisi-polisi di daerah 
untuk menjalankan regulasi FIFA. The report by the government's investigative team found that the primary cause of the deaths was the tear gas fired by police. But five months later, a criminal trial against police and security authorities for negligence resulting in death ended in a shocking verdict. It was stated that the gas had been fired towards the center of the pitch and hadn't affected the spectators. Two of the three police on trial were found not guilty. The bereaved families seeking the truth were not the only ones furious at this outcome. Many regular civilians were outraged, and banners of protest appeared all around Malang. A police box at this crossroads was plastered with posters criticizing their actions. A traffic officer had been stationed here before the incident. But as distrust in the police swells, it's now left unmanned out of concerns for officer safety. The outcome of the trial left the bereaved Sari stunned and furious. Kecewa, sedih. Karena ini adalah kasus yang nyata, terus korbannya juga nyata. Selama ini belum ada yang bertanggung jawab secara penuh siapa. Itu belum ada. Dan kami berharap masih berjuang siapa sih yang sebenarnya harus bertanggung jawab. His son died because of the sport he loved. Sari wants to fight in his name. He plans to launch a civil suit with the backing of the victim's support group. The shock of the tragedy led one supporter to take up the challenge of transforming Indonesian soccer fandom. Ignatius Indro is the founder of a supporters community. He's visiting the stadium where the disaster took place. It has been closed since the tragedy, and no matches are currently held here. Indro wants to prevent any such incident from happening again. He feels that the best way to do this is to change the attitudes of supporters. Tidak ada sepak bola seharga satu nyawa pun gitu ya. Ini harus menjadi momentum untuk benar-benar memperbaiki sepak bola secara keseluruhan. Soccer is hugely popular in Indonesia and both international fixtures and the Pro Soccer League regularly fill stadiums to capacity. But it's also called the world's most dangerous league because extreme fans sometimes break out into violence. Supporters of rival teams often fight and there are reports of deaths almost every year. A crowd of high schoolers has gathered outside the gates of a university in Jakarta, Indonesia's capital. Indro and the local university are co-hosting a futsal tournament between senior high schools. Ah, 
Many of the students here to cheer on their school are also fans of pro soccer clubs. The goal of this tournament is to teach them to respect other players and supporters and to refrain from violence or verbal abuse. Indro has taken on a number of other initiatives to improve relations between rival supporters, such as joint food stalls. His efforts have produced small but promising results. Thirty-two teams are taking part in today's tournament. The students become fired up over the course of the day, and their verbal support becomes heated. Indro stands by the court, calming down the students each time they become too excited. The tournament progresses to the final. Contact between two opposing players sparks a fight. Fans of both teams storm the court. The college students running the tournament do what they can to calm the chaos. Leaders of the supporters appeal to their fellow fans to settle down. At the award ceremony, a Best Supporter Prize is given to the fan group that behaved the most respectfully. Malang, the hometown of Arema FC. An entire neighborhood here is painted in the team's color. Many residents are fans of the club and lost family or friends in the tragedy. Indro is planning an event for Arema fans and supporters of the rival team they played on the day of the incident. He's come to talk to Riki, who leads Arema's fan club. The shock of the tragedy has left Riki reeling, and he is reluctant to watch another soccer match. Dukung <laughs> 
But Riki agrees to consider a futsal tournament with his fellow fans in the near future. Seperti edukasi tentang masalah supporter Indonesia sih baik-baik aja mas. Saya mendengar-dengar aja edukasi tentang supporter dari Persija dan Persib itu tentang olahan apa namanya UMKM ya UMKM. Alhamdulillah itu sudah berjalan dengan lancar dan edukasi seperti ini yang paling utama yaitu SDM supporter kita. Even the deepest divisions can be bridged by a shared love of soccer. It's this belief that keeps Indro going. Kita ingin nonton sepak bola secara aman dan nyaman bagi seluruh masyarakat Indonesia. Jadi kita ingin bisa membawa nih keluarga, bawa anak, gitu ya. Nonton bola bareng-bareng. Ini sebagai hiburan. Sepak bola ada hiburan, gitu. Loh. Central Jakarta is hosting a match with a popular local team. In addition to stadium stewards, nearly 4,000 police and soldiers have been mobilized for the event. Some police officers stationed outside the stadium are armed with tear gas. After the tragedy, police decided that security inside the stadium should be left in the hands of soccer clubs. But they also want to be ready to respond to any requests for intervention. What is there to learn in the wake of such a terrible event? For the people of Indonesia grappling with this tragedy, there are no easy answers.